Tad is a very strong and passionate and kind and loving person. Kat wears her heart on her sleeve. You know, if you come in, she'll she'll tell you how you're feeling in a good way. She's really outgoing. She is determined. She is very motivated to stay active and stay true to what she loves and never wanted to let pain decide those kinds of things. Since I was little, I've kind of dealt with a lot of injuries to just my body. Like, no matter what I did, I remember when I was in third grade in particular, I remember going to the doctors and them being like, you have to be careful, like when you're playing on the playground, like your joints are really flexible and lax. And then as I got older, and especially when I started swimming, my joints, specifically my shoulders, were dislocating really frequently and often. And as soon as I started college, I knew that something wasn't right with my body. If I wasn't dealing with one injury, I was dealing with another. And so I decided to finally go to my doctor and after several failed surgeries on my shoulder, I was just like, okay, what's going on with my body? Like, I need answers. I've had hip issues, I've had knee issues, like I've had shoulder issues, like something's not right because I'm doing everything that I've been told to rehab wise. And so he sent me to a geneticist in Iowa City at the University of Iowa Hospitals. And they ran some blood tests, um, did some other tests to determine my hypermobility, and they diagnosed me with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. EDS, as we call it, it, it's a genetic condition that basically it affects the collagen in your body. So the collagen is the glue in you. So collagen is it's the building blocks of you that's all over. There's different kinds, so it affects each person specifically. There tends to be a lot of joint hypermobility or joint laxity or joint looseness, and that causes pain and dysfunction for people. If you've had a lot of dislocations and subluxations to your joints for no specific reason, that would be abnormal too but it can also range for people. Collagen also is in your vessels, so it can change things vascularly for you and they can suffer from dizziness and things like that. There's so many different kinds and then the symptoms uh, vary so much from person to person. The downside of EDS, we have treatments, but there's no cure. Along with EDS, I obviously have a autonomic nervous system disorder called dysautonomia, which goes with a lot of patients who have EDS, so I'm prone to passing out and things like that. I really got to like, like see, for obviously, firsthand like what it's like having those flare-ups or passing out or dealing with all these different health issues and like learning about like what I can do to help. Time went on and uh, like, I think her symptoms really, really got worse, uh, especially in like the fall of this past year. So when I'm about to go into a flare up, I notice that my body just gets very fatigued. My muscles get really achy. I start having muscle spasms, muscle tightness, and it becomes harder and harder to get up. I would say fatigue is just the biggest symptom, whether I'm about to pass out or whether my joints are about to be very inflamed. You can pretty much see like visually on her face that she is in like a tremendous amount of pain. Um, kind of is like processing things like a little bit slower uh, than, than usual. You just kind of have to be patient with, with that and like understanding and like know that yes, she's hurting right now. Uh, she may need a little bit of extra help. So I think like just from coming from our standpoint, like being patient with her and like giving her the space she needs, but also like helping her in the ways that, that she, she might need it. I wake up kind of early. I've always waken up early. Like my body clock just wakes up. I actually find that mornings are the best time for me anyway. So I wake up in the morning and I 
just kind of let my body relax a little bit. I do like some rehab in the morning just to kind of get my body ready for the day. I'll go through like the series of Moldowny protocol that I was given from my physical therapist. So there's kind of a little bit of a set protocol that we go off of. Um, collaborate a lot with the PTs that she works with. Um, basically just make sure she's doing the stability exercises she needs to be doing just to make sure her joints and everything are doing what they should be. I actually work out in the morning some days when I am able to work out just because that's when I have the most energy and it helps regulate my body I feel like a little bit better. There is an excellent treatment principle out there that starts with strengthening your core, the middle of your, your powerhouse first, and then loading it where you're doing lots of repetitions, but really low weights in order to improve pain and dysfunctions. I also make sure I take my meds and stuff like that. And then I go to classes and between classes, I make it a priority to kind of relax and let my body chill. At the end of the day, I focus on like school, work, whatever I have to do, and I make it a conscious effort to go to bed early and just take care of myself. Kat has done a really well, or a really good job of like adapting to like a new lifestyle and like working through that acceptance process. I would say she's doing really well. Um, despite any setbacks or anything she's had between swim season and now, uh, I think she's doing really awesome. Kat is someone, she's very determined and motivated, so if you teach her what to do, she can take the tools and apply them and be successful. One thing I've learned like with myself in knowing people with chronic diseases is you can't judge a book by its cover. If you were to look at me, for example, you would assume that I'm a healthy 20-year-old gal just living life in college. On the inside, like every single day is different. It's like whack-a-mole. One day you deal with one thing and then the next you feel like you've conquered it and by noon that day you're dealing with something else. And so when somebody is experiencing something in their life, whether it be from a chronic disease or a struggle that they're going through in life, you can't just look at them and be like, oh, they're fine. You have to put yourself in their shoes and show empathy and be like, I might not be experiencing what they're going through, but I can only imagine and just try to put yourself in their perspective.